Welcome back to the Joy of Sticks. Stickhead here as always. Now, got some additions to make to the core collection, so we'll have a look at those in a minute. But first, I uh, just want to say a huge thank you to Steve Benway for giving us a shout out on his channel. That's most appreciated, and the subscribers have been flooding in ever since he did that, so that's really great. I think I'm uh, going to hit 100 subscribers very soon, if I haven't already. Haven't checked since I've been back from work, so you know, you never know. Anyway, I'll have to think of something special to do for a, a celebratory 100 subscriber special. Uh, and what was the other thing I wanted to do? Oh yeah, I want to ask your advice actually. Uh, if any of you out there have got um, a Game Boy Micro, I'd love to hear your experiences with the machine. Because I've been looking at a few on eBay and uh, really, really tempted to get one of those. I've got a GBA SP, um, but there's something about the Micro, the, f the form factor of it. I know the screen is smaller but a lot brighter. Um, and I can just I can actually imagine using a, a Game Boy Micro out and about when I'm on the bus and stuff. Whip it out, have a quick go. Um, but I can't imagine doing the same with a GBASP. It's just that little bit too clunky. Um, I have got an iPod Touch which I normally use for gaming on the go, but it's not so good for your arcade style uh, games. You shoot 'em ups and your platformers and things like that. Well, I find anyway, because I just don't get on with touchscreen controls at all. I mean, there are some games that do it really well, like uh, what's it called, Pix and Love Rush. That's you know, does it really well. There are there are games out there, uh, Jeff Minter's games, for example, that really use the device at its best. But a lot of the games that are like retro games, like recreations of those games, they. Um, when they recreate those controls on the screen, I just I can't get along with it. I need that physical click of a button or a D-pad to really get precise control. So yeah, I struggle with that. So I've been thinking about getting uh, a GBA Micro, which is ridiculous because I've not long sold my Dingu, uh, which is a really nice little machine. But I don't know. I've, that's emulation, you see. And I don't know. There's something about emulation that I can't get on with it. Really. I've actually does excite me to fire up a new emulator that I've never tried before and get some uh, games working on modern systems that, that you know that's cracking I do enjoy it but nothing beats the real thing really uh, I said it in a, a comment to a guy on one of my earlier videos um, you know there's something about the the smell of a machine and the sound that it makes if it's you know got a disk drive or whatever and the click of a zip stick or the actual feel of the proper joy pad in your hands you can't beat it so emulation it, uh, I like it because it gives you access to things you you know you would never be able to play normally but as far as really getting down and dirty and really getting into a game you can't beat the real game on the real system so uh, yeah so I'm thinking about the GBO micro you know would you recommend it you know really sorely tempted to get one so anything you can tell me about your experiences with the system would be great uh, yeah stick those in the comments down below um, and I'll have a think <laughs> obviously it means cutting into my funds I've got a nice little uh, stash of PayPal funds that I'm going to be spending on ST games and I'll, I'll, you know if I get a micro it's going to be cutting into that a little bit but you know it's all right you know, life's about balance and stuff like that anyway should we get cracking let's see what we've got here then it's maybe open. What's in here? Uh, you recognise that from that? Ah, it's because I'm not very familiar with this game. This is Cult. Uh, spelt rather cunningly with a K. It's not bad condition, really. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the black boxes always do have, you know, where they've been rubbed up against stuff. Um, they lose a bit of their lustre, I don't know, and there's a bit of a bash there, but not too bad. You know, nothing to get really upset about, and it's all right. Here. Um, there's the back. So that's all right, actually. Not too bad. A bit worn in that corner there. If you can see that. A bit worn there. 
that's all right. As I've said in the you know previous videos, it's all part of the character, so uh, no problem there. It's a two disker. Let's get one of those. There you go. Pretty simple printed black and white label, as was often the case. Now Court is a uh, is a bit of um, a point and click adventure, really. It's uh, what else have we got here? That's interesting. So that's the manual how to play. What's this? interesting there's a bit of like a uh, background literature a word to the wise interesting this is obviously full of hints and tips uh, of how to play the game mm -hmm. nice and the book of origins and the book of shame so it's obviously a case of you know, reading this background material gives you a bit of a clue as to what to do, where to go in the game. Because I get the impression that, yes, it's um, it's a point-and-click adventure, but um, the puzzle elements are more played up, I think, in this. Um, if, I, if I remember rightly, you have to do certain things to win schools or something. Let's see what it says. First we gave you Captain Blood, then came Purple Saturn Day. Now, Exos is proud to present Cult, the Temple of Flying Sorcerers. An electrifying masterpiece, nice. By the flabled, fabled Arbeit von Spacecraft. Undisputed Master of Madness. <laughs> what? Yes, it doesn't really tell you much about the game there at all. But... If I remember rightly, it's a series of screens uh, with each, you know, have a, a set task to do. Um, and you've got to get those tasks to win sc schools, I think. I remember it being schools. Anyway, yeah, so not very familiar with that. But I had a quick go. Um, that was when I was I was scanning ST format magazines. There was a review of it. So um, I had a quick go of it then to get some screenshots for my old website. And uh, yeah, it was it was unfathomable, <laughs> unfathomable really. So uh, with the manual and everything, hopefully I'll be able to make sense of it. All right, package number two. Let's have a look. As it comes. Now this is the first of its kind in my collection. I don't know how well you can see. But it is actually sealed. Brand new. Sealed. There's actually what, 1990s air inside this game still. <laughs> Amazing. So with that comes the dilemma, right? Do I leave it like that? Or do I crack it open and play it? I don't know. I'll tell you, for the time being, I'm going to leave it in there. Because my STE, which is set up down here, um, has got the floppy disk drive taken out and the SD, the floppy disk emulator put in instead so I wouldn't actually be able to play the physical disk so it would be pointless cracking it open so I'll be leaving it for now at least in the shrink wrap and thinking about whether to open it or not but yeah let me know what do you think about that I mean I'm sure a lot of you out there are collectors so what you know do you like to keep things unopened and stuff like that there's actually a program on yesterday uh, James May went to an auction and bought some Hornby original trains in their box uh, and as soon as he bought them and picked them up off the auctioneer he took he <laughs> opened them up, took the train out and said have you got a bin <laughs> and asked them to throw away the box much to the shock and uh, disgust I would imagine of uh, hmm, of um, of the collectors, but there's something interesting here because yeah, it's shrink wrapped, but there's a bit of that case missing there. Hmm. So, either it was originally broken, and there is some scratches on the case. I think somebody's trying to pull a swift one here with a shrink wrapping machine trying to make out that these games are brand new. Ropey. Regardless of that, I played Peanuts for this, so I don't feel ripped off at all. And 
I, yeah, I don't think that's the original shrink wrapping at all. I think somebody uh, on eBay, not suggesting that the guy I bought it from, for I know he bought it from someone else like this. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not casting aspersions, but that's very interesting and nefarious to say the least if if my suspicions are true. Mm. If, if, I mean, have any of you come across stuff like that? Have you, you know, have you bought stuff that's shrink wrapped that obviously isn't new? So, I mean, if you've got the shrink wrapping machine, it's a way of adding a bit of a premium on tea games that you're selling on. Mm. Oh, perhaps I'm just being cynical. All right, here we go. Number three. Oh, it's a game. Now, I mentioned this actually in my last video, if you caught that, my last video was about oids, uh, which, you know, obviously, if this come before, it must have come before oids, uh, took a lot of inspiration from this. In fact, it's almost the same game, oids just adds to the uh, the whole thing, and you know, I love this, this is a plastic case, it's uh, much better condition than the, the cardboard cases tend to be. Few scratches and that on there. I'm gonna have a close up look at those screenshots. Uh, but yeah, what a cracking game! Absolutely love this game. Very similar to Oids in that you know patience is required uh, <laughs> and not always achieved by me. Yeah, after playing for about half an hour, I tend to lose my rag a little bit and start zipping it around, which is never, never a good thing. It's one of those where the inlay is also the instructions, like in the good old specky days, in the Amstrad days. Yeah, so I'll look forward to playing that. And yeah, catch the Oids video, if you didn't, I'll uh, put a link in the bottom. So there you go, three lovely additions to the core collection. Actually, I'm not sure if that's going to make the core collection. I have a feeling it will, because it's just so quirky, so different. I mean, you'll see if you haven't seen this before. When I put a video up, you'll you'll see just how quirky and different it is. So there's a good chance actually it will make you thinking about it. Thrust is a definite because I had that for the Electron, I had it for the Amstrad, I had it for the Atari ST. Thrust has always been part of my gaming life, so that's a definite. That's going in there. Hopefully, I'm a bit better at it now than I was when I, when I was a kid. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, an Eliminator, although it, it wasn't one of my favourite games, it makes it to the core collection because it was one of the very first games that I played for the Atari ST. Because my uncle, when he got his ST, had the Power Pack. Now, I don't know if you know the Power Pack, but it was a, it was almost like a big folder type thing. Uh, and with the discs laid out in there. Uh, and there were lots of actually really good games for, you know, for... A bundle you get with a system you expect a couple of decent games and then a lot of filler but I seem to remember what was in that I think Outrun was in that and R-Type, Black Lamp, Star Goose, Star Ray, Bonjack? Am I right thinking Bonjack? Lots of, yeah loads of oh, Overlander lots of really good games that really showed off what the system could do so um, that was a nice little package, and that, that I'm pretty sure Eliminator was one of those games. Uh, so, you know, played that. It was rock solid, rock solid. But it was one of those games where you just thought, wow, this is, the, you know, the new generation of gaming right here. So I'll have to, I'll have to give that a try and <laughs> laugh at my naivety. But yeah, that's by a, a, a programmer called John M. Phillips, who you might know. He's a bit, bit of a legend. He also made... Uh, Nebulous, which is an absolute cracker of a game, um, and just as hard as Eliminator. It's one of those where you <laughs> really gets you tearing your hair out uh, after a while. But yeah, so you know, wait for gameplay videos of those. I've got loads of games now that I've added to the core collection that need gameplay videos. So over the next few days, that's what I'll be doing: playing games, making videos of them. So uh, make sure you catch those. And as I say. Let me know about your feelings towards the Game Boy Micro. Um, still trying to decide whether to buy one or not. Whether I'm just being a bit of a magpie. Because <laughs> I do that from time to time. See something shiny and think, ooh, what one? Uh, but uh, yeah, let me know if you think I should or not. Uh, and what was
was the thing. Yes, if I mean, if you've been living under a rock, you know, <laughs> perhaps you're new to YouTube and you haven't seen Steve Benway's channel yet, you have to check it out because he is the grandmaster at this kind of thing. He's uh, always, you know, I've watched him for a long, long time and always found him entertaining when he when he's playing games. He's really knowledgeable and uh, well, anyway, you'll see when you go to his channel. So check that out and uh, thanks for watching. Take care.